All right, I've uh, rolled out a piece of clay to make uh, indicate where I want the uh, reins to go. And what they'll do at the foundry is they'll uh, make those reins out of uh, bronze wire, twisted wire, so it looks like rope. And uh, this just indicates how I want that rope to appear on the uh, the horse. Time to play with some clay. Back in 1991, I the first time I used a uh, Indian model, and I mean one who is dressed uh, as a warrior would have been dressed in the 1860s or 70s in authentic clothing that uh, he uh, made and in some cases would bead or use quill work on the uh, clothing. Before the Indians had beads, they, they used porcupine quills. And I actually prefer the porcupine quill over the uh, beads because it, it, it just, there's a, some, a quality about it. It's, just, it's such an ancient form of decoration that uh, it's really beautiful. I'll see if I can find a photograph and put it up here. Anyway, uh, his name was uh, Michael Terry, uh, Michael Badhand. He, uh, the first time I had him pose for me, he uh, dressed as a Blackfoot warrior with an incredible feathered headdress, fully clothed in leather clothing. His horse was uh, decked out uh, with uh, a necklace of dew claws of a uh, antelope. An antelope is a very fast uh, animal and uh, the dew claws of the antelope uh, was felt that it gave the horse added speed and uh, imbued the, the animal with the uh, speed of a antelope. The dew claw on the you got the hoof of the uh, antelope and right behind the uh, hoof are two black dew claws. And that's what I'm. That's the part I'm talking about. Anyway, when I watched him ride out in uh, the field that he was uh, posing in on horseback, uh, myself and Rocky Hawkins, an uh, artist friend of mine. Uh, we're taking photographs of him. We hired him for the afternoon. And uh, it was like I, I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, you, you can see movies, but those are Hollywood. This was authentic in every form and every shape. And it was like I stepped back in time in a from a time machine to view a warrior of that period uh, riding through a field. And it was... The sound of those dew claws clanking against each other and uh, the movement of the horse and the clothing and the headdress and all that stuff just was like I stepped into a dream. Unbelievable. Right side. Woo! 
Anyway, uh, he tied this kind of a rein on the horse. It's a rope rein. And uh, I've just put it here to indicate to the, to the foundry how I want the rope, which they'll make out of a twisted uh, bronze wire, which will be about this thick. Uh, it'll be twisted in a way that it looks like rope. And uh, and I'll weld that on to the uh, finished bronze. I'm just getting this ready to go to the foundry tomorrow. Uh, to uh, I'd like to be able to get it to where I can take it and leave it. But uh, I know I'm going to have to do some work on it and uh, all that stuff. But I'm going to take it tomorrow to get uh, a idea of what it's going to cost to cast. Uh, once I know what it's going to cost the cast, I'll know what, it, what kind of a price tag to put onto the uh, clay or onto the bronze. Uh, you have to know what the cost of casting is before you can establish a price because without that, uh, you're guessing. About nine years ago, I think, I think it was nine years ago, uh, I could be wrong. It could be shorter time. But anyway, uh, I did a sculpture of a warrior, uh, a bust of a Indian about half life size, wearing a war bonnet. And I sold a copy of it to a gentleman in uh, Paris, France, uh, through a gallery in Jackson Hole. Um, when I took it into Jackson Hole, I didn't have a bid on it. And so I was guessing at the, the cost of casting it. And I was wrong. And uh, the piece ended up costing a lot more to cast than I guessed. And so I ended up not making any money at all on the sale. I ended up having to put, put money out of my pocket to cover the casting costs. So I don't make that mistake anymore. You just have to have your ducks all in a row when you when you uh, take your sculpture into a gallery. It's got to have the right charges for casting. If you don't have that, then uh, you're going to be really out of luck when it comes to time. Because you can't demand more money once you set the price and the person has agreed to purchasing it. Oh, I guess I could have, but I didn't because I believe in keeping my word as far as that goes. I put a piece of clay here to be, uh, to back up this feather so that, uh, it will look like it's out there floating free when it really isn't, I gotta do that because I've got to be able to back it up behind the feather so they can cast it. If they don't, if I don't do this, they have to cast the feather separate and I don't want them to do that because that adds cost. Big time. What I'm doing is I'm having the ends of the feathers, the uh, quill, end where it connects to the uh, rope. So that when they cast it, they'll cast it without the rope there, but with the feathers there. And... Uh, I'm going to have a wrap around his tail, maybe a uh, colored ribbon or cloth or scarf that's been wrapped around the tail.
All right, that's going to be it for today. What I did was I uh, added a couple of uh, feathers on the uh, back here, and it, it, they're just sketched out feathers. They're not finished feathers by any means. I'm just not sure how I'm going to have them yet. Um, maybe like that. I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm just going to find out how much more that's going to cost. I'm not going to do any much more as far as uh, decorations on anything because, quite honestly, everything I do from this point is just going to add cost. And uh, I've got to watch the uh, cost because I can't get it to a point where it doesn't sell because it's so damn expensive to produce. All right, I got the clay mounted on the board I have in the back where the seats would be in the back of my van. And I screwed it down with screws into the board so that it won't be flipping around and sliding around and getting damaged. I've got the flag uh, laying on the base. And I'll attach it to the uh, figure tomorrow at the foundry. All right, good night, everybody. See you next time. Please give me a like. And a subscribe and ring the little bell also don't forget I have instructional videos available now online the link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos later everybody good night